Hi, welcome back to Knowledge on Ears. Today's topic is quantum foam. We'll visit this in three questions. What is quantum foam? How did we find out it exists? And why does it even matter? Let me tell you something crazy. If I gave you a box and said that there was nothing inside it, is it empty? Nope. What about space where there's nothing, no air, there's nothing? Is that empty? Nope. Quantum foam exists and it's everywhere in space-time. Even something as empty as it could possibly be still has quantum foam. So quantum foam comes in both particles and energy waves. This is because if you've ever heard of Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, E equals mc squared states that energy and mass are the same thing or interchangeable. So since mass and energy are the same, then particles and energy waves are the same. So quantum foam comes in both particles and energy waves, but they're virtual. This means that virtual particles have some properties of ordinary particles, but their existence is limited by the uncertainty principle. So quantum foam, it comes in both particles and energy waves, but they appear and disappear within a fraction of a microsecond. That's really fast. So now it's there and now it's not. So how did we find out quantum foam exists? An experiment conducted by the scientist Casimir, called the Casimir Effect many years ago, was conducted. So we know energy waves come in long and short forms. So quantum foam energy waves are in long and short. So he took two metal plates and put them very close together in a vacuum, so there's no air or external force to move the plates. And since the plates were very close together, even though they're in a vacuum, that doesn't mean that there's no quantum foam. There's still quantum foam, but because they were so close together, all the longer energy waves formed on the outside, while the shorter ones were on the inside. And because of that, the plates moved closer together. So, what does this tell us and why does it matter? Well, places like CLS and CERN, where there's particle accelerators like these, in which they take subatomic particles into beams and collide them in these particle detectors, they're conducted in extremely high, ultra-high vacuums. And even if it's a vacuum, there's still quantum foam. And if we don't calculate quantum foam in a theoretical result, our experimental result could be different. And quantum foam can affect the beam. It can slow it down, speed it up in an accelerator. But still, why does quantum foam matter? Well, our conventional theory states that space-time is filled with 10 to the power of 120 times more energy than we think. This extra energy is because of quantum foam. This energy that quantum foam creates is responsible for creating some stars in our universe, more powerful stars, larger stars, and is responsible for some nuclear fusion and fission reactions in our universe. Essentially, quantum foam is important. Thanks for listening.